So I, I'm Jerry Sanders. I'm, I'm glad to be here and, and meet you. This is uh, planet Earth, and that's planet Mars, and that's the road from planet Earth to planet Mars. And, and I want you to know, as you know, because others have mentioned it here, that it cost India $74 million dollars to get from Earth to Mars. It cost the United States almost nine times as much to cover the same distance. So let's hear it for India. That, that $74 million, dollars, I am told by my mathematician friends, is 450 crore rupees, which comes to about seven rupees per kilometer. And in fact, um, it's a rupee less than uh, per kilometer tuk-tuk in Delhi. <laughs> and in fact, the trip to Mars is a lot smoother and faster. <laughs> and um, we've got some traffic here, Mumbai traffic. So in fact, you know, my friends tell me that traffic in Mumbai is now so bad that in order to get home from work on time, you actually have to take the day off. So, so look, traffic, congestion, pollution, that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm going to discuss how we move today and how we could move and should move tomorrow. And you know, again, bad news, good news, okay? The bad news, you know traffic is hell, it's ruining our lives, it's polluting the planet, it's stress, it's, it's awful. Um, what I'm going to tell you about now is the blue planet we live on Earth. We call it blue because that's how it looks from um, space. It's clean, it's pristine. But every day, pollution is turning our planet gray. In fact, on some places on Earth, there is no more blue day. It's all gray day. And whether you're a climate change believer or a climate change denier, <laughs> pollution is an uncontrovertible and non-controversial fact. All of the simple, observable, measurable data shows that pollution is ruining our lives. And the single most, the greatest polluter is the car. And the single greatest factor that multiplies the car's negative effects is traffic. <laughs> so how much traffic is there? So every American, that's me, spends one week a year, every year, in traffic one week a year. I could have been in Hawaii. <laughs> and when you compare Indian cities like Delhi and Bangalore to the most uh, heavily trafficked American cities like New York and Los Angeles, um, you, you see that the um, IBM Commuter Pain Index ranks Indian cities almost three times as much pain as, as the American cities. That three times as much, that comes to about three weeks a year, meaning you could have been in Hawaii. <laughs> Now, some say the solution to this misery is, of course, more roads. And, of course, that's the wrong answer. And it's the wrong answer because actually building more roads makes the situation worse. There is something called the fundamental law of road congestion. And I don't pretend to understand the math, but extensive data from the London School of Economics, where they know math, conclusively demonstrates that the number of vehicles kilometers traveled, or VKT, increases in direct proportion to what they call ALKR, or the available lane kilometers of roadway. So building new roads and widening existing roads simply and ironically results in additional traffic until you get back to what it was before the new road, and then it exceeds the new road. So we all know we still have to get around, so what do we do? Well, a bunch of smart friends got together in California, and they said, what do, we, what do we hate and what do we like? And they said, okay, well, we hate following schedules, right? We don't want someone else to tell us when we can go or, or when we have to come back. So they want to travel without having to follow government schedule or municipal transportation schedule. They want to follow their own schedule. And um, they don't want um, to stop at other people's stations because that slows them down. So every time you're on a bus and you have to stop and stop and stop, they want, they want a system that goes directly to their station. And I want a system that goes directly to my station. They don't want to be stuck in traffic. And they thought, well, let's go above the traffic. They want to go fast. They want to go 200 kilometers an hour or more. And they don't want to be listening to other people's conversations or having other people listen to their conversations. They don't want to be stuck in a sardine can. They want a system that's private and comfortable. 
And they don't want to pay a lot for it, of course, right? They want to leave cash in their own pocket. So if you agree with me on this, do you agree with me on this? Yes. yes, of course you agree with me on this. Then I've got the system for you because these folks didn't just sit around and think about it. They actually went out, designed it, invented technology, patented the technology, built prototypes, and that system's called Skytran. And I'm going to show you how Skytran works, and then I'm going to tell you how it actually functions. So here we go. Here we go. So Skytran, you see it's elevated above the traffic. It can go very fast. You don't have to stop at someone else's station because, as you see, you just go off-ramp and all the vehicles continue beyond you, uh, pass you by. Um, very comfortable and convenient because it's private. So you get into your own vehicle, basically. You don't have to be stuck with other people. And um, you have the best of all worlds. And best of all, it's cheap. How cheap is it? It's actually one-tenth to one-twentieth the cost of any other competing transportation system, including light rail, subways, whatever else you know. How fast can it be implemented? In days and weeks, we could cover a city the size of Mumbai. Why? Because it's all built in a factory, and then it comes on site, and it's assembled like Lego on site. So this is a total game changer. How do we do it? How can we have a system that's so energy efficient, uses so little energy, in fact, we use one-third the energy of a hybrid Prius car, and we can move at very high speeds? What's the magic? The magic is in magnetic levitation, and uh, a unique form of that magnetic levitation that we call uh, Skytran magnetic levitation. <laughs> My colleague, uh, we're based at the NASA Ames Research Center. What he's showing you is he's holding a magnet in his hand. Magnets are invisible force that attract other magnets, uh, attracts other magnets, and they attract iron. He's pointing to the top sheet, which is plastic. There's no iron in plastic, and the bottom sheet is aluminum. There is no iron in aluminum. So he's going to drop the magnet, and you'll see what happens from the plastic to the aluminum. Okay, we get it. Drop it. <laughs> There we go. So he drops it, and it just falls straight down. Why? Because of gravity. It's going to do it again, drops the magnet, it falls straight down. Now, what's cool about aluminum is although it doesn't have any iron and it's not magnetic, it does conduct electricity because it has something that physicists call loose electrons. And those loose electrons conduct electricity, but on magnets, they also act sometimes like heavy molasses. And you see? The magnet comes to almost a full stop simply by changing the orientation of the magnet. We're going to show it to you again. From the plastic to the aluminum, boom, complete stop. Now, anyone who's been on a roller coaster has experienced this because this is how roller coasters stop. You can go very fast and then boom, you come to an almost immediate stop. Why? Because of this molasses effect. So what did our engineers do? They thought, well, if we can change the orientation of these magnets and put two magnets together, we can fly. And that's what you're seeing here. This is the magic of magnetic flight. This is just like a glider glides on air. Our wings, we call these our magnetic wings, glide along this aluminum. And they're doing it on a magnetic wave that they themselves are actually generating, so no power is required. Now look what happens. We put a Skytran vehicle on our magnetic wings. And all we have to do is push this vehicle forward or pull it forward, and you're going to see what happens. Bingo, flight. And understand that this flight is free. We're not spending any energy to get the flight. And what does the flight get us? Zero friction. And what happens when you remove friction from transportation? Your energy uses drops, drops precipitously. So all we do is we take all of this stuff and we give it a little push. If any of you have played air hockey or ice hockey, you know what happens when you give that puck a little push? Boom, it'll go forever. That's how Skytran is efficient, cost effective, and really the game changer. Do you guys want Skytran in Mumbai? Yes. Okay, well then you need to tell, thank you. You need. Please address your politicians, address your bureaucrats. Address your colleagues, tell them, why don't we have Skytrain? Why are we sitting an hour and a half to two hours to get from here to Juhu? We are working in India, but just here's an example. Okay, Mumbai, we could go literally from Kalaba to uh, Jessel Park. We could do that in less than 10 minutes. 
because we do travel at speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour. And remember, because we don't have to stop in anyone else's station but your station, we don't have to start and stop and start and stop. You know, the myth of high-speed rail is that it's always high speed. When that high-speed rail sits in a station, it's going zero kilometers an hour. So, folks, we're coming to India. We're actually working in the state of Kerala. We're working in Bihar. We want to be in Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, everywhere else. So please make your voices heard because we're keeping the planet blue. Thank you very much. Thank you.